Okay, so what are critical points in calculus? So the point x f of x is called the critical point of f of x if x is in the domain of the function and either f derivative of x is equal to zero or f derivative of x does not exist. So now let me just quickly erase this and uh, let's talk about one example and I'll show you how that works. Okay, so... We have this right here. Okay, so let's just talk about one example. So let's say we have f of x is equal to um, x to the power of 3 minus 12x plus 5. Okay, so um, you have to find the derivative. And to find the derivative, you have f derivative of x is equal to 3x squared minus 12. So now you have to set that equal to 0. So because we know that uh, the domain of that is all real numbers, so that means that you can't have an instance where f derivative of x equals does not exist. So you need to set f derivative of x is equal to 0. So you have 3 x squared minus 12 is equal to 0 so then you have 3 x squared equals 12 and then you have x squared is equal to 4 and as you already probably know x is equal to plus or minus minus 2 so the way I like to think of this is that you have like uh, so I'm just gonna make this chart right here so in that you know it's like a number uh, table so you have um, you have positive and negative 2 so you, let's just make this negative 2 and let's just make this positive 2 so if you plug in a number between negative 2 and 2 back into the f derivative of x then if you get a positive number then we're just gonna put a positive but if you get a negative number then we're just gonna put a negative so um, if you let's take like w 1 let's take 1 so if we put 1 back into 3 x squared minus 12 so you have 3 multiplied by 1 squared minus 12 is equal to negative 9 so that is negative so we're just gonna say that this is negative and then uh, let's just take another number so you need to take a number that is uh, lower than negative 2 so let's take negative 3 so if you plug in um, if you plug in negative 3 in there then you have 3 negative 3 squared minus 12 is equal to 3 times um, 9 which is 27 so 27 minus 12 is a positive number so let's just put a small positive there and then you do the same for this number right here too so you plug in um, like let's say 3 so you have 3 3 squared minus 12 which is still 27 minus 12 so that is a positive number so let's just get rid of this So now, since you have a positive number, I like to draw these arrows to indicate how the graph is going to look. So then now let's draw a graph to make it easier. So you have a graph right now, right here. So you have 1, negative 1, and well, you have negative 1, negative 2, and you have 1, 2. So at 2, it goes from negative to positive, going from negative to positive, meaning it's going to be like up here. Um, meaning negative to positive means that it's going to be a minimum, and then positive to negative is, means that it's going to be a maximum. So if you plug in negative 2 back into the original equation, you get negative 2 to the power of 3, which is 8, and then you get negative 12 times negative 2, which is 24 so you have 8 plus 24 plus 5 so that's um so you have 8 plus 24 which is 32 plus 5 is 37 so let's just say right here you have like 37 right there or something and then uh if you look at 
And, oh, sorry, that was 2, so let's put that right here. And if you put negative 2, then you get negative 8. Wait, that wouldn't work. Let's try that again. I think I messed up somewhere. So, if you plug in negative 2 into the equation, then you have negative 8 plus 24, which is 16, plus 5, which is 21. So let's just put that right there. So let's say that's 21, and then you plug in 2, so you get 8 minus 24, which is negative 16, plus 5 is negative 11. So you have negative 11 right here. So you know that that is going to be the minimum, and that is going to be the maximum. So the graph, it's going to look something like... It's going to look something like, like going like this. Something similar to this because uh, the derivative in this case is equal to zero at those points. So if you draw like a tangent line right there, so like right here it's equal to zero, and then right here it's equal to zero. Well, guys, now you know the basic principle of calculus, which is critical points, which includes derivatives. And so critical points, in order to have a critical point, you need to have the derivative of f of x is equal to zero, or the derivative of f of x is equal to does not exist. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this useful.